from Madurai. Uh, she's a Tamilian and uh, she have two brothers, blessed brothers. And uh, she is, uh, as I told, she's a medical ministry. She's in West Bengal. She's doing God's ministry. Uh, as Engel, she has accepted Lord and she's doing God's work as God's was excellent. To all one says, uh, as, as, uh, as God promised that was, she is doing. Uh, this hour of I'm giving to Sister Jasmine. God bless you, ma'am. Jasmine, can you hear me? We haven't heard anything from you, Anita. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Uh, good morning, dear brothers and sisters who have gathered here from different places. I'd like to wish you the best morning today. And before we get to the message, I'd like to pray. Let us all bow our heads down for a word of prayer. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank thee for this beautiful morning, Lord, with the beautiful souls. Lord, as your servant is going to speak, hide me under thine wings. Hide me and let thine spirit speak, O Lord. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'm very glad to be here. Uh, thank you so much, Sister Anita, for giving me a chance talking to everyone about the word of God. <clears throat> I just want to ask a few questions to everyone gathered here. If you agree or if you want to say yes, please press the thumbs up so that I'll understand. Or if you want, you can just open your video and show me a thumbs up. I'll be able to understand. I just want to ask you a question. How many of you really love a branded item? Like costly products, expensive things. How many of us really love? Because I, I would like to agree openly and frankly that I really love it. That's why I'm asking everyone, if you really don't love, I would like to tell you something. Costly products are not just costly when it comes to the branded items. They last long. The reason that I love them is they last long. And I'm very happy to own expensive products too. I'll tell you why. And before that, I'd like to remind a story. The thing is, well, you must have heard about the fox and the grapes. It's a children's story. You must have really heard how the grape was so attractive on the vine for the fox. It was just desiring every day that one day I will be eating that up and finally it ended up it could not it ended up with a regretfulness it just went with a scornful heart saying that no these grapes are going to be sour why am I saying this is it's because it was too much the grapes were too much for the fox to deserve it or to have it. And just as the same way, I would like to emphasize that how people, they go for branded items and costly products just because they last long. I'm telling you, you and I are very expensive. And with this, I would like to entitle my sermon as the costly you. Let me tell you why am I calling you and me as costly? Because I would like to I would like to show you something before we go over there. I would like to mention one part that I received a very costly gift from one of my best friends. I was very happy receiving that gift. And when I received the gift, I just got to know I was receiving one more gift from, a, from the same friend. And I asked her like this, what happened? Why are you giving me two? And then she told me like this, oh, Jasmine, you have a brother, right? 
I have two brothers. So she bought for both of my brothers. And then she gave me, I was like, how could she afford it? And later I got to know she worked hard to afford three gifts at a time for us. And I came home and I, I gave my brothers their gifts. And then I kept my gift in the hall and I went into my bedroom. I was very tired and I slept off. And it was like a pair of like headsets. It was very good. And once my, my brother, when I just got out of my room in the middle of the night to drink some water, I found my brother listening to music using that, that headset. I was, I was like, ah, are you enjoying? I asked. And then he told me like this, oh, yours is the best. And I was asking, what's going on? You got the same product and you are still saying that yours is the best, which means that is, he nodded his head. That was mine, obviously. I was really angry. I wanted to hit him, but I could not do that because he's my brother. And I was, I was so angry, freaked out. I was just giving him a stare where he just removed the headset, kept on the teapot, and then he went into his room, he locked up to sleep. The next morning, I woke up the previous night, which I forgot to keep inside my room. It was still on the deep high. The next morning I woke up and then I came out. I saw my younger brother with his, with his little friends, those who came to visit my house just to see the products that he received. And after a while, I didn't see my headset anymore. I didn't use that at all. And then I lost that I was, I was so down, I didn't know how to explain. It's because, not because that was a headset that I loved, but because the effort that my friend made to bring that to me, that matters. So I would like to ask you to turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 23, which says this way, I'm reading from the New Internet, international version you were bought at a price here here the the writer of this book he's mentioning that you were bought at a price how many of us really really see how costly is that price you were bought at a price let us see what is the price in First Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. First Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. It says this way. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors. But with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. So it clearly says that what are we bought for? We are bought for a price and the price is the blood of Christ, which we cannot even imagine if I'm going to ask you, will you ever die for your friend, for your mother, for, for your brother? We may say yes, but at the moment of dying, we'll realize, we'll regret how hard it is. And many times we even refuse to say yes, because you and I know very well, very well that how hard it is to die for someone. When Christ chose to die for us, even you and I were born. I mean, even before, even way before you and I were born. That is the price that he spent on us. And let us see why did he buy us with such a big cost? I said, I mentioned earlier, people love branded product because they last long in this world. That's what we think. And I would like to emphasize that what's the reason that God bought us for such a price? Let us turn to 1 Corinthians 
the same chapter, chapter 7, verse 23, it says that we are the servants of God. And 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, it says to glorify God in, in your body and in your spirit. Revelation says that for his namesake, he created us. God is giving us a clear evidence, a clarification. Why did he create us? He's saying to glorify his name, to praise his name forever until the day that we live in this earth. Why I mentioned the previous stories, I would like to give three reasons. Number one, do not let anyone insult you. Why? Because you are an expensive product. You are bought for a price. It's the blood of Christ. Nobody can change that fact. God is telling you today, just like the fox, how it was scornful when it was walking away from the bunch of grapes. When you are carrying the word of the Lord, of course, you're going to be blessed abundantly, seeing the abundance of blessings. Many people are going to be scornful at you. Many people may see you with jealousy eyes. Many may try to insult you the way Fox insulted the bunch of grapes. They may have no idea how sweet it is to be the child of God, how blessing it is to carry his word around the world. Even though it is going to be hard, even though you're going to sail on the hard ships, they don't know what it is to feel like to be loved in the hardship, what it is to be carried by his hands in the hardship. Only one who has tasted it may say, Lord, how good you are. If anyone is insulting you, never give it a react. If you're going to react, if you're going to let yourself react onto that insult. You are letting yourself down because you have Christ in you, who is a king of kings, residing in you, cannot be insulted by anyone. Walk away, move away. Don't care about what they talk. It's all you being with the Lord. The relationship between you and God will be affected if you let if you let a little bit of space for the scholars. Number one, don't let anyone insult you. Number two, don't have a low self-esteem. I would like to emphasize this for the youngsters of today. Many of us, we think that, what can I do? If you are calling me to do the work of God, I'm so young. I don't even know how to live independently. And how can I work for God if you have such kind of question? I'm telling you today that if God can use a crow to feed the prophet, he can make use of you to carry his word around the world, not just near your house not just around your neighbors. The only thing we have to do is, you and I have to do is, give your heart to the Lord and let him work in it. Give some space, let him walk on it. And that is how he's going to use you and me without even our knowledge, because it is far beyond our knowledge. The works of God are always awesome. The more you dig and dig and dig and dig, I'm telling you, it's going to be deep and deeper to know about his work. And that's what we are going to learn in the heaven when we return back, for he has bought us with a price. And the third thing that I would like to mention is do not regret. 
to not regret just as I regretted. I kept my product outside and I lost it. And later I regretted a lot so bitterly. I could not take it in anymore. Do not regret. Once you choose the way, once you give space to the Lord, once you start working on it, once God is down to his business, do not regret. Oh, I'm facing all these hardships. Did I ever take the wrong decision? God, what are you doing? Are you sitting silently and watching me over going through all these things? Do not have that regret because God knows how much you can bear. He's not going to load your shoulders with something which you cannot take it. When army men, when, when they are practicing or when they are trained to become an army man, of course, they go through a lot of hardships. They have to stand in everything. If they cannot stand it, they're not going to be an army man. They're not going to make it. They are going to be rejected to not regret. Instead, repent, repent. It's not just only our sins, which can be obstacle for what we are dedicating ourselves to be. It could be our ancestors' sins. It could be anyone's sins around, any of your dear one's sins, loved one's sins. I'm telling you, the Bible says that God will inquire his sins to third and fourth generation. Let us remember all these verses, what he has told, that we are bought of a price. When we are bought of a price, our sins are forgiven. Don't regret it thinking about any of the sins. If you think that I've committed, I'm worthless, I cannot do it. I'm telling you, you are bought for a price. You are made worthy. God doesn't call the chosen. He, he sorry, God doesn't qualify the, cho uh, qualify the chosen people. Sorry, God doesn't choose the qualified people. Instead, he qualifies the chosen people. So I'm telling you today. You are chosen, just as the speaker mentioned yesterday, when many are sleeping, you're here praising the Lord, thanking the Lord, confessing your sins, praying unto him. You are special. You are special in his eyes. When we have these three things in our mind, I would like to request you to have one more thing in your mind. When you see the fellow sinner, do not look down on that person. Do not judge that person because of his actions are sinful or her actions are sinful for we are all born in sins, but bought by a price. God has bought that person also with the same price which, by which he has bought us. If you are so special in the eyes of the Lord, your fellow friends are the same, so. If you, are, if you are really worthy enough in his eyes, of course, your neighbors are also worthy in his eyes. The three things go with us. Number one, don't let anyone insult you. Don't insult others. It applies on us too. Number two, don't have a low self-esteem. And just as the same way, don't look down on someone else. Number three, don't regret. Instead, repent. How we're all blessed with talents. Of course, God has not blessed everyone with the same talent, but he has blessed everyone with the same level of talents. He has given the same amount of talents. Even if you have got only one talent, I'm telling you, the level of talent is the same with everything. The only thing that we have to do is allow God to work on that so that he will make you better and the best. At this moment, 
I would like to tell you one thing that I have seen, that I am the witness that I have seen that. We have a little kid in this campus. He is more or less like 11 years old. He always plays around. He shares his food with everyone. He always calls me, Jasmine, baby, I'm going to help you in running. He is my trainer in sports, he says. Of course, I agree to that because he is good at sports. We call him David. One day he came to me and he said that I have a hundred rupee note. I have a currency of hundred rupees. So what are you going to do? I asked, and then he said that he's going to market and he's going to buy many things which I cannot eat. And he's going to come in front of me and eat very nicely in front of me, taunting me, he said. And that's when I said, it's okay. I made my mind. I'm not going to be taunted by your actions. And then later I found that he came with two fish and I asked him, uh, are you going to eat the fish? I asked. And then he said, oh no, I bought them to, to leave them free. And I was like, what them? For your pool? What are you talking about? So he went on the roadside, he found people catching fish. So he went and asked, can you give me a fish? Because he wanted to just feed in the water. He doesn't like when he sees others killing animals and all. And his heart is moved all the time. He sees such kind of acts. So he told me that I asked for one. They gave me two. I gave them 100, he said. And they said they refused to take money. And I was so moved. How nice. His kind act that he could, he could redeem only two fish that day. Of course, he could redeem. That's what I'm so happy about. Just as the same way God has redeemed us to enjoy in his pool. It's not that God has redeemed us to, to be filled with sins or selfishness or something. The Bible says he created us for his glory and he redeemed us for his namesake. We are here to praise his name and take his glo and glorify his name and take his name around the world. If you were ready to take his word around the world, I would like to emphasize, please remember you are costlier than you think. You're bought with the price and the price is the blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. It was a very inspiring and wonderful message, sister. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, we are the costliest one because the Lord, our Savior, has redeemed us from the sins. So now we'll be going, moving on to the breakout room. We'll be divided into twos and threes. We'll be praying for 10 minutes. And we'll be back to the main room for the closing prayer and the promised word. Just a few minutes. We'll be assigned. 